Welcome to today's video where we're going to take a look at this J1850 variable pulse width module that I sell. You can get on eBay. Um, what we're going to do today in this video is something useful with it instead of just looking at how to talk to it with an Arduino or you know how the board's built. We're going to take a look at making a fuel gauge with it. So we're basically going to recreate the fuel gauge out of a um, 2004 Silverado. Uh, we're going to use a GM PCM that will give us that data for the fuel level, a little potentiometer to be able to adjust the fuel level, and we're going to have a 2004 Silverado uh, gate instrument cluster. Uh, actually, this one's a newer one that I'm using. Looks like it's a 2006. Um, but yeah, we're going to have the instrument cluster, our uh, gauge that we're going to make and the PCM in this video so that way we can kind of see that we are properly emulating that fuel gauge uh, as best we can here. Uh, it isn't perfect code but it's a example to get you guys started. So yeah, I know I hinted at this before my move to New York and this is my first video that I'm doing since I've moved here to New York. But yeah, that's what's with the different background you're seeing is uh, I've just moved, but let's uh, actually jump into this. Uh, we're gonna start with taking a look at uh, how this is wired up and then take a look at the setup and we can take a little look at the code. Um, so yeah, let's uh, just jump right into this. All right, to find all the files and information you need to do this, first you'll find it all in the description, but also the GitHub repository that I've been using for this J1850 stuff will contain it. Um, so yep, yeah, just uh, you get on GitHub and where you find the files for the board and how to implement the board. Get, you know, it's got some example codes in there. Um, you just so you come to this repository here, um, but we're going to go to this one labeled example gauge, and all the information you need is in this folder. It's got a kind of a pictographic schematic for you, um, should be easier to follow for the beginners because I've been getting a lot of requests on, like, hey, how do I use this to make? Normally they're asking like a whole gauge panel and I'm not going to go into that level of detail on this stuff, but um, to make like a single gauge, um, th this this will get you started. Um, I got the bill of materials so that way all of these devices that I used um, you can find here. This display is different than the one shown in the drawing. This is the correct display, that's what I actually used. Fritzing just had this one in there that had the exact same pen out. So I just used that. It's a different size display. So it'd be a, if you were to use this particular one, uh, it'd be like one line of code you'd have to change just to kind of change the size of it. Um, but yeah, um, that's kind of everything that you need. Uh, the example codes here that pictures there, and then that's this readme file that you're looking at. Okay, so without going into too much detail uh, on this drawing, uh, what you have here is a RP2040, uh, a level shifter, the um, J1850 module, and a display. So this level shifter is because this runs at 5 volts, and the RP2040 uh, is a 3.3 volt uh, controller, and then this display is really meant to be run at 3.3 volts as well. So um, so that's what's with this. I know I, I haven't used the level shifter before on the channel, uh, so something a little different there. Uh, it is a bi-directional level shifter, so you don't have to worry about if does this pen need, is this a, a TX or a RX pen? Uh, it doesn't care, it's, it's bi-directional. Level shifter gets us our five volt logic over here, 3.3 volt logic over there. Um, this display, pretty standard setup for a display. Uh, it's basically SPI, even though they use the um, I squared C um, um, labels there, that SCL and SDA uh, is actually a um, uh, clock and meso pen. So yeah, kind, kind of, or sorry, uh, mosey pen. The, there is no meso on here, so there's no master in slave out. Um, the display doesn't respond with anything; it it only receives. Um, so yeah, you you have your reset pins and all that. 
So just kind of follow these along, uh, you know, pin one's right here and uh, it goes over pin 40 is there. Uh, pin 40 is the, the USB voltage. So yeah, we're powered off of the USB connection here. Uh, that's all what we're using USB for. We're not doing any serial. You can turn on serial to use for debug, but it's, it's not used in this code. So the USB port's just being used for power. And that's, that's kind of it. So over here is our gauge pod. It's all running right now. We just got a uh, lab power supply powering everything, the instrument cluster, the PCM, and the gauge. Um, they're all kind of tied together in this rat net, rat's nest of wires behind there. And we then have this uh, potentiometer. We're just using two sides of it. So we're kind of using it as a ray of stat. We're going across where the fuel gauge would be. So it's on the fuel sender return and the fuel sense pins. Um, if you wanted to actually recreate this setup, you know, this side of it, uh, you would just use the pinout that you can find on Google for the instrument cluster. And then you can find the pinout of the PCM on um, uh, LT swap. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's all you need documentation wise to do that. And then for this, uh, that's all on the GitHub. So let's take a look at it actually, you know, doing something. Uh, we can adjust this potentiometer. And yeah, sorry, my arm is kind of in the way there. And yeah, we went the wrong direction. Let's go that way where it goes down. Okay, so now we've taken it all the way down. So it's low fuel. Um, you'll notice that we just kind of move immediately to the position. The instrument cluster has um, anti-slosh kind of in the code that keeps it from um, moving too fast to a position. Um, just it's it's literally just to keep it you know looking nice. You can definitely do that in the code here. Um, my uh, indicator I have set to come on at like fifteen percent. I think these are like two or three percent. So yeah, the indicator's a little bit different. But yeah, so we have a little indicator that shows that we have low fuel. Um, you could change that indicator to be like a, a greater than instead of a less than and use it as a high indicator like you would probably want to use on voltage or temperature or RPMs. But um, yeah, so we can definitely just uh, kind of adjust it. So yeah, we don't have to go all the way down. We can kind of go somewhere in the middle. It is a little finicky because this is a 1K um, pot and it's really just like, um, eh, kind of close to, to half. Um, and yeah, you can see we're still very slowly putting along to uh, to get to the same spot. So yeah, that anti-slosh, because I mean, it, the fuel, <laughs> your fuel gauge should never move this fast. You should never be losing or gaining fuel uh, as fast as we're adjusting this. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, since we have a different range of motion, we kind of don't really look like we're matching, but if you do the percentage of it, they, they do, they do match. Um, so yeah, we're just basically scaling that, uh, zero, uh, to 255 of, um, what the, the value is to a percentage here, and then using that percentage to kind of move around on the uh, the gauge. Uh, let's let's take a closer look just so you can see what the gauge is supposed to look like. So yeah, and here is just kind of a close up of that gauge moving around. So it's a, a relatively smooth. It's it's not scaling it. Um, It is just jumping to exactly what it received. So if if it received, you know, a uh, hundred uh, integer of like 125, it's going to be like right at half. Um, or if it gets an integer of like two, it's going to be all the way at low. Um, you know, z zero would be like a hundred percent low. Um, I don't think the the PCM really ever sends FF or zero of zero. I, I, I haven't seen it do that, um, but it gets close to um, autumn. I, I have seen it send like FE, which is 
which is pretty close to FF, you know, <laughs> you don't have much left there. Um, so, yeah, it, it, it'll it send, like, from 2% to 98% um, on it. And, yeah, that's, um, there's you kind of the full overview of it. Uh, this USB is just being used for power. Um, if we can see, it is just going to a power brick over there. So, yeah, we're just running off of um, USB power. The uh, the 5 volts comes out of the, the USB power there, and then the 3.3 volts is made on the board there that powers everything else. So that's um, really the overview of the board itself and kind of showing you a practical application of... Um, of the board that I make and sell. So yeah, let's uh, take a very quick look at the code here. Okay, so this is the code you'll find on that GitHub repo there. Uh, and yeah, as you can see, we're not using a ton of libraries. We are using all the libraries for the, the screen, but for the J1850, we're just kind of doing it uh, live in the code. Uh, Kind of the main things I want to note here is first, it's really short. It's a 113 lines of code that, that, you know, we have to write. And then the rest of it's just in the libraries. So, uh, so this isn't like something that's unobtainable for someone to learn how to do. Uh, it's really a mashup of two different projects I did. I did one, you know, months ago to do that YouTube short um, of just like a sweeping gauge that that was also what it was, was a sweeping gauge. There is no, like, smarts behind it. Um, and then the, the other one is just my old read example that I did, like, a couple of years ago for um, for this module. So the, it's just two different projects I did, just smushed together. Super easy um, to implement and just get going. So the main things we have here are our, you know, we're broken up into a couple of blocks. If you're unfamiliar with Arduino, you have your like includes and your variables that you're going to define. You get those set up. And then you have your main setup that you're going to run and your main loop. And then you can have other functions that you're calling like this uh, SBI cycle and process frame. Um, things for if you want to kind of play with this code to to note. So if you want to make that indicator a, you know, a uh, greater than, um, you know, this number or less than this number. So if you want it to be like a high trip or a low trip, uh, just uh, change this right here. Uh, that, that'll, that'll change it from a high trip to a low trip. If you want to change what percentage it's tripping at, uh, that is this variable right here. You, you can just change that. Oops change that to whatever percentage you want it tripping at. Um, okay, uh, other than that, there's not too much to go into. I guess we should cover this right here too. Um, so this process frame is actually how it decides where to set the needle based on the J1850 frame that it receives. So frame is not like a frame on the screen, it's like a frame of data. Um, so I knew that the fuel level was, uh, these three bytes. So the, the sender receiver priority, um, was this, uh, I didn't realize at first that I needed, uh, another, um, another byte to be set. So within that sender receiver priority, you also had the, um, um, uh, a byte that told, I, I don't know what integer value 19 means. Um, it, it's either for the second fuel tank for the, the cars that have two, uh, or it's to tell it how fast to sweep. Not really sure uh, what, what that one is. The reason why it's an integer instead of hex was just because I was debugging it really quick. Um, but yeah, 18 was the one that's actually the fuel level. So I needed I needed basically my frame to be this. Then I'm just looking at that fifth byte there and taking that byte and um, uh, turning it in, scaling it from from zero to a hundred percent roughly. 
um, with uh, this right here, and then we just draw it. So drawing is where we're going to draw the needle and set the level. Um, we could we could do the draw gauge at zero at the very beginning, um, so that way the needle would be set. So you can you can draw the gauge in the beginning. I wanted to know for a fact if I was getting data or not, so I have it not draw the needle until it receives data for the first time. Um, so that that was just something I did for debug. You can change it, do whatever you want with the the code. Um, it's it's free to use. You know, do do whatever you want with this code. But yeah, the code's pretty simple, so I don't want to dig too deep into it. I especially don't really want to dig too deep into like drawing the gauge and the needle and, and all of that, like the things for the screen, because it's not really what I do on the channel. Like displays and stuff are a little bit foreign to me and not something I do with the channel. So this was a lot of experimentation for, for the screen side of things. Um, so yeah, that's that's really all I have for the code. Okay, well, hopefully you guys like this project. It wasn't a super expensive project to do, so if y'all want to recreate this, you know, all that's linked in the GitHub, it'd probably cost you about $60, uh, depending on price fluctuations. So definitely, if it's something you want to recreate, uh, I'm, I like this project as a nice practical one. It's not one where it's just looking at a serial port, you know. All of my other example code here has been like stuff that it's just spinning out to the serial port so you can process the data on a computer. This time we're kind of using it more of what I would envision somebody using this for. You know, I, I can see using this for like um, data translation from like CAN bus to J1850 um, or to like make a modern product work on uh, something else. Again, not necessarily a consumer grade product, but just like a bespoke solution for yourself. Um, so yeah, you know, we're using this module. We did this module a couple of years ago and um, it does the J1850. We have other options here that are not using obsolete parts, but for, for this one, I've been getting requests of like, hey, how do I do this? So I figured I'd do a little video on it. So hopefully you guys like the video. Uh, if you were trying to like use this as a, a learning point on it, uh, one of the things I'd say is don't copy and paste exactly how I did like the display because I'm not an expert on it. I, I you know I'm more of a hardware person than a software person. I'm not the the best at writing code, um, so don't take what I wrote code wise as like the end all be all of code. Um, but I'm just trying to get you somewhere where you can get started with it. Uh, I think I think it came out nice. I think things to do on this would be to kind of add that anti-slosh, that uh, you know, smoothing that 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 movement of the needle, um, and you know, some other things. So definitely, uh, there's there's room to improve, but but I'm happy with what I'm putting forward for if somebody wanted to try it out and try to just learn some more about this um, this GM class two protocol. So yeah, I hope you guys liked the video and I will see you in the next one.